folks, we're back on the water and I got my daughter, Bella, driving the boat. I got a lot to tell you about today. It's pretty cool. We're on Cedar Lake. First and foremost, my daughter does have her boater's license. Just so you know, no negative comments. She got that when she was 14? Uh, 13? 13 years old, she got her boater's license. Um, very young. So we are, uh, we're on Cedar Lake, an incredible fishery love it for crappie fishing check it out it is a 99 lake so hence the boat the boat is reno's boat my buddy's boat he's keeping it at my house for i guess the rest of the summer and so we're going to get to use it on all the small lakes i'm totally stoked cedar lake grassy devil's kitchen and we're gonna have a good time so do you remember bella from uh, all the giveaways <laughs> she'll liven up we just got on the water it's early it's way early for her it's like 7 30 7:30. Let's go over there actually. Let's try that first. So we're gonna try some float fishing. It's the spawn. We're gonna check it out. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. All right, folks, thanks for joining me again. Today we are on Cedar Lake. This is the first time this year. I've also got my beautiful young daughter, Bella, with me. She has not been in the boat for a long time, so it's gonna be great experiencing the spawn with her. And then, of course, we've got Reno's boat here. Now, this is a beast, powered by a 9.8 Nissan. He's had it since high school, and man, it's just a great boat. Starts up every single time. This is gonna be a great experience bringing the kid out, showing her a little bit more about crappie fishing. And I'll tell you what, it's been a couple years. She's 15 now, so um, I think she's gonna put some slabs in the boat. Let's do it. Please subscribe, here we go. Oh, this is a better fish right here. First fish of the day right here. It looked kind of like a good fishy spot. Oh. Killers. So that's the first fish of the day. <laughs> Pretty. So like I said, we had not been on this lake. I've not been on this lake this year. So we really had to spend some time patterning the fish and figuring out exactly where they were at in the morning versus the afternoon. We planned on spending the entire day out here today. So we've got time to do it, it's no rush. Um, and we have a great time trying to figure it out. Uh, but you're gonna run into some, some bass and some bluegill and i'll tell you one thing that's really great about cedar is all the lay downs as you can see we're passing one right here throughout the entire lake throughout the entire day we fish a lot of these lay downs and it's a lot of fun you're going to catch fish bluegill bass you don't you name it you're going to catch fish and that's probably one of the most important things uh, when you're out there with your child putting a hook in a minnow's head is a big deal <laughs> Good fish of the day right there. We'll put Bella on some. She's about to get it done. That's a good fish. Are we keeping these today? Mm -hmm. Are we keeping fish today? I'm not clean. What the heck happened to the minnow? I don't really know what to do. Is that good? Uh, can you take it off? There you go, that's your biggest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one thing that's important for people that don't fish a lot is that when you do reel it up, 
you want to make it easy on yourself. You don't reel it all the way up to the hook or the weight like my like Bella did. So go ahead and release your bail real quick. This is a good lesson for anybody that's just picking up fishing. Yeah, so right there. So the idea is that you can pull the fish out and then you can swing the fish to you without having to try to get up there and get at it, uh, that type of thing. So that would be the difference between somebody that's not experienced, I guess hasn't done it in a while. You can tell pretty quickly. So when you reel it up, you bring it up to the water, then you swing the fish into you. You got it? So you gotta really secure that head on the minnow. There's a wiggle. Wiggling. So you find a good little tree here. It's got a lot of fish on it, which is the perfect type of fishing that you do with people that are new to the sport. Keeps them interested, keeps them involved. Of course, she wants bigger fish. We're gonna find them. Fish, you don't even know it. Nope, not all the way up. See what you're doing? I, did it. I know you get you did better for sure, but even more so than that. Mm, maybe she's ah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, no. Can you show it off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Best fish of the day. Best fish of the day. So we moved away from the casting to the shoreline to vertical jigging. It looks like these fish have moved out a little bit and we're hitting these little brush piles outside those spawning areas because, well, it's been pretty cold lately. We're fishing about 10 foot down. So I just cast, pitch it out there. You can tell we're using 2D, no live scope, and just 2D, which is what I used to use for the longest time. You clearly can see a lot of marks there, a lot of fish right here. So it's been a while since I've had either of my daughters in the boat, and I can tell you what's changed as they've gotten older is the social media part of it. So understanding that they're going to have their phone with them, that they're going to play on their phone while they're fishing. It's not all about the fishing. It's, And that's one of the reasons I think Bella really liked the vertical fishing is that she could do it based on feel rather than finding or looking at the float the entire time. But just understanding that part of it, it was uh, totally an eye-opener for me very early on in the experience. Hooking a minnow for everybody. Minnow, hook, underneath the chin, right through the base of its head. Try not to hit the brain, that'll kill it. That's the way I do it. There's a lot of ways you can hook a minnow, but that's three pounds away. So what's very interesting is because of social media, I've become, I've been able to accept it in the boat. It's okay. As long as they get out and they experience fishing, I think it's actually an okay thing. Um, if it gets them out in the boat, that is. So having it out there, I have no restrictions, have fun with it. At the end of the day, she caught fish. She had a great time. You're going to see her put some really good sized fish in the boat. In fact, here shortly, but, uh, she had a fun time and she learned a lot and you'll see that throughout the episode as she grows, being able to do her own minnow, be able to take the hook off by herself. I mean, she grew just within this one fishing experience. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. You I had, know, it no, scratched but, me. I know, but if you, if you hold it like this, so this is good for everybody too. <laughs> All right, so this is a good lesson. So how you take a fish off a hook is grab it and you secure those fins, those dorsal fin, the bottom fin there, you secure it and then you focus in on grabbing the hook securely. So go ahead. I, Come on, you got this. It hurt. You got it. You got it. Grab it. A lot of people will say slip the hand over to keep the fins down. So like that. Yep. Slip down. Now hold it firmly all the way down. Further down. I don't okay. Know now grab the hook she's doing good <laughs> there you go and then you chuck the fish <laughs> holy crap i got a big one dad, dad. oh pick that up 
Go, bring it up, straight up, man. Good, good fish. Good fish. Get in there. I can eat. That one's got eggs. I don't want to take it off. Don't mess with that one. This one we're taking pictures with, though, for you. That is a good fish. Three times? Can you take a picture with you? She wants me to bait it. So, but I was going to tell you guys another thing to consider or think about when you're fishing with your children, let them know how to set the hook. I always tell people on my guide trips is to set the hook with the pole. So, set the hook, then worry about reeling. We don't set the hook by reeling. A lot of people, you know, as soon as they get that bite, they do this and initially that's not an easy way to set the hook. Set the hook, then reel. And an important part of that is always managing the line. So knowing how much slack you have, you know, from your pole to your bobber or from whatever you're doing, because obviously you can't set the hook if you have this huge long slack. So I always tell people, make sure you're managing that and knowing exactly where you're at with it. Thanks for watching. Three Pound Fishing, please subscribe. Thanks, Ozark Rods, for a great time on the water. Another great day on the water, and Bella was a treat to have this morning. I'll tell you, we do another episode for the afternoon. You'll see that here shortly. But at the end of the day, get your kids out there, definitely during the spawn. Just make sure that they're catching fish, bluegill, crappie, it doesn't matter. Get them involved with fishing. It's a great sport, something they can have for the rest of their lives. And so hopefully I'm doing a little something like that with my kids.